Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of DIY MMO where I make an MMO by myself on YouTube because I'm running out of reasons that might be funny. Um, if you have suggestions for funny reasons, leave them in the comments. If I sound a bit weird, like if I sound, if my voice sounds extra bad today, because yes, I know a lot of you find find my voice kind of weird. That's asthma mads for you. If I sound extra weird today, it's because I've kind of got a cold, but I'm still recording. So I hope you bloody like it. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that sounded way too aggressive. Anyway, um, first off. So Yuzuki did a song for us um, called Serendipity and I shall show you a little bit of it now. You can click anywhere on the screen to go to the actual video and watch the full thing and by watch I mean listen. Isn't that nice, everyone? So the art that I use for that is just some old art assets I still have lying around. And but it, it I I like it because it's a good um, it captures the feel and aesthetic that I want this game to have. It's not going to look exactly like that, but it is going to look a lot like that. Hopefully, eventually. Right now, it doesn't. Right now, it looks like this. So this is what we had last time. Now, you notice that my ID has changed because today we're going to make it so if there's multiple people, you will actually see the multiple people. Part of that uh, process, and we shall go through all the stuff I've done off screen right now, was to change everything to use um, incremental IDs. That's just the thing that I use. Um, it's just an identifier, but because on JavaScript you don't have a long, you just have a double type. It uses longs on the .NET type and doubles on the Java type, JavaScript type side. After that, words, I am not good at them today. So let's, let's uh, look at what we did. Okay, so this one, it now takes a... I was using unsigned integer, I don't know why I'm a... There was literally no reason to not use incremental IDs for that, so I've changed that. Also, I was looking at this, binary.length minus 36 minus the size of an int, and I'm like, I don't understand what I'm doing here, so I added it after I figured it out, which took me like 15 minutes. This is why you comment your code, kids. I added a comment. Um, yeah, we added a server message for entities and remove entities. So if the server sends this, it's it's basically notifying the client that they are now aware of an entity. If it sends this, it's notifying the client that it's no longer aware of an entity. Um, so the character data is also different because the client is now aware of its identifier. So that now sends the identifier. The location data that sets an entity location now sends the ID for the entity that you want to change. So if the server wants me to change my entity to a certain location, it has to send my ID with it. Uh, move message, um, also the same thing because it's like a location message except it's a path. Uh, I deleted the test message apparently, so this has a whole bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, so all the all the movement stuff got got put into an uh, into an entity class. You can't move the camera anymore. Um, we now have an entities uh, thingy. We handle the two new messages. Um, we do something now! Yay! Uh, yeah, and all, all of this. So I've already handled all of this off screen because it was basically getting us back to where we already were, which is not interesting to watch me do. Um, so the set path now sets the path on the entity 
and instead of updating it manually we update each entity and that sets the path and then we just set the camera position to the position of me of our entity the entity with our id so that's how we track the the our entity and instead of rendering just at the camera position we just render a sprite at every entity location Whew. what is this this is the dummy lo login yeah i have to change that because this was giving me a fixed id it's now generating new ids for every every time you log in basically uh, same thing oh that's not what i wanted to do at all that's not Character data, yeah, that now has the ID, uh, but basically all of this is basically the same. Um, yeah, this now sends the ID with it. When you log in, it um, now sends an entity message for your own entity. So otherwise, the location message will fail because we don't know we don't know that entity because the server hasn't told us that it exists yet. Um, yeah, and I added the serendipity song, and the entity message, the remove message, um, uh, type converter to, to convert incremental IDs, and we made the entity class. Now the entity class is just, it's all the stuff that we had in the main class, except now it's in an entity class, which is way better. Whew. So I'm gonna do a thing. I'm gonna commit this mess. And then we are going to get started, maybe? I don't know. Sorry if I went through that a bit quickly, but last episode ran a bit long. So I'm trying to make this episode not run a bit long. Okay, so now we need to have people um, be aware of each other, which is going to be interesting. This is not what I was looking for at all. Am I just doing that in this class? That is not what I should do at all. I mean, it's... Uh, it's not great. So let's change that. Public. Pudliv? Pudliv static. Public static void on part B. Is that a small or a big B? It's a big B. And then it's uh, this mess. Just let's just do it that way. Did I do that right? Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, that doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. Maybe I should just just do this. Let's do this. Maybe just running this tick. Um, we don't know this is going to run to any times a second. So we don't need to lock anything because presumably this is going to be a copy. If we're smart, if we're not smart, it's not going to be a copy. The only problem is if we remove a client from the copy of the clients, that is not going to be a thing that works. But, you know, that's... let's just worry about that some other time. So you call server dot... What? Oh, tick. I call it tick. Sorry. So clients copy the lapsed current time. Yay. Uh, should the server have like a static time thingy? I don't know. Okay, so this updates all the clients. Let's see if this even works. That's just... Yay, it works. I think. Probably. It probably works. So now we don't have to look through all this mess just to see what we're doing. Um, okay. But we have no map awareness right now. Do we need map awareness? Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't know what I'm doing right now. So the problem is I want to notify a client when a new entity exists. 
But how do I do that? I don't know. Let me figure this out and then I'll bring you back. How about that? Okay. Okay, yeah, I, I think I know what I'm gonna do. Uh, why, why? Stop running. Don't run. Don't run from me, I just want to hug you. I don't know why he said that. That makes no sense. Okay, so when we start... So the server now needs to start having a concept of, of, of the world state. So we have... Uh, let's just do this rough right now. We have a map. When we so we're taking basically uh, game client has this whole map generation mess in it. We don't want this to be in there. Want this to be in here. So okay, so we we do this basically when the server starts. So that works. And then we can do this and this, and then we need this. Okay, because we don't need to have the map heights, I don't think. So we can remove all of this mess, and we can remove all of this mess, and then everything is going to no longer work, so that's cool. But that's fine, because we're doing this in a messy way, we can just do this. Just set it to server.map instead of normal map, and that will all work out fine. This is not how you're supposed to do that, but we'll deal with that. That is future me's problem. I'm sure she'll be very pleased about all of that. Um, so, okay. We need to start the server before we start the server. So we have server.start, but now we also have server.start. Because that is not confusing at all. That is not confusing at all, you dumbass. Okay. Um, sometimes I swear on myself in, in comments, in code. It's... My doctor assures me it's completely normal. Um, let's see if that still works then. Yeah, it works. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. Um, so now, when a game client is entering a map, we want yeah, that's a good question. What do we want? So, we no longer want to do this then. We don't... We want to... St we don't want to do any of this, actually. Come to think about it. Data.location. Character data. Okay, so we have... Uh, blah, 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 blah. We have got the character data that we need to store somewhere. So let's uh, do that. How do I, how do I did, did, that, did that with the other stuff? Okay, I just put in an action. Okay, that's fine. Do I? No, because this is a lock-free queue, so I don't need to lock it at all. Um, so what we're going to do is actions.nq. Um, new client action, I think. Yeah, and then we're going to put a lambda function into there. And that will do a thing. So the character data received is when we log in. So we're just going to call login. Login is already. Um, enter game. And then we're going to send that the data. I think. That what we're doing? Yes, that is totally what we're doing. I am completely ad-libbing, ad-lib, ad-libbing, ad-libbing, ad-libbing this. Uh, enter, enter game. Is it? Is it enter game? Yeah, it's enter game. 
character data data. Because then we don't have to deal with the fact that there is a whole mess of threading. It's exactly why I did a thing. Also, we keep sending the map to binary. Yeah, no, that's fine. Because the map might change at some point, in which case we do want it to not store. So that's something that the map, like we could do some caching mechanism. If the map hasn't changed, we don't need to recalculate the whole thing because that's a load on the server, but that's premature optimization. So we're not going to do that at all. So once we enter the game, it, it sets the location. Yeah. So once we enter the game, so this should, in theory, be working. In theory. Yay, it worked. I'm so happy that things keep working. It's amazing. Okay, so now we've entered the game. What are we gonna do about that then? Because the server doesn't know we're just doing this, but we don't want to do this. We need to add it to the map. That's the thing that we need to do. Okay. So the map now has list dictionary. Let's just do a dictionary. A dictionary of game clients. Points. This should this should be entities or something. But it's it's not. So you know, we can change that later. That is basically my overarching philosophy in this project. It's like, yes, this is wrong, but we can change it later. So let's let's just do that. Yeah. So you want to do add client or something. I don't know why I just plopped that in the middle there. Let's just put it here. Let's put actual functionality near the top above the whole map making thing. So yeah, this should, this should really be an entity, but like I said, I currently just don't give any fucks. Uh, yeah, client dot ID. You don't have an ID. Yes, client. That's fine though. That's uh, it's not a problem. Uh, public incremental ID ID get return ID. So that's a lot of IDs. A lot of ideas. <laughs> That's a pun. You're welcome, viewers. Okay. I'm not gonna get this done in time, am I? So now the map knows that an, a client has been added. So what we want is for each var client in clients dot values. Let's just do C, because we already have client. If C is not us... Do we even need this? Whatever. Um, normally you do this by like a distance, but right now I'm just letting everyone on the map know that there's a new client on the map. Even though that's not efficient at all. Um, C dot send new se entity message client.id ah, that's all they need that's all she wrote and then we want them to send a se location message with the client.id and the client.location or position or whatever we called it which is also not a public thing. Location. Location, location, location. Normally I use position to, in in this game. That's not what I wanted to do at all. I'm using location, which is so uh, interesting. It's a new kind of feeling. And I will surely get continuously confused about all of this mess. Okay, so that should theoretically work. Maybe? Actually, do we really, do we really want, do we want, do we want to do this? 
No. Let's just not. Let's let's say we did and not. Cool. Cool beans. Um so server dot map dot add client me Let's see if that does a thing. Well, it didn't break. Okay, so let's um in the wrong direction. Direction? The wrong direction, the wrong directory is what I meant to say. Debug. So if I make it a client, that will hopefully show up on the other client. No, it just crashes. That's good to know. Did you crash? No. Huh? Does this just always crash? No, it doesn't always crash. Okay, so we've made a client. Um. Then if I start this, this should crash. Is this keeping the 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 file open so I can't read it? Is that what you're telling me, game? Let's just uh um I don't know. Do this. Maybe. That is something that I'm gonna have to look at in the background between videos. Okay, so now you should work. Yay! But it doesn't work. Unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Uh, let's see what it says. We have added an entity with ID 1. Yeah, we never got the other entity, did we? Uh... Huh? Oh! Oh, oh, that was dumb. Okay, every client is making its own ID generator, which all start at one. So that's not going to work at all. That is just, just not going to work. Um, let's just delete this. Okay, so what we want is to go in here. Maybe? No. That is not what we want. What we want it to be is in here. So this is no longer a thing. And we're just going to do new RNG dot next. And then new inc Oh wait, I can, I can cast that? But I can cast that. That is, that is perfect. Okay, so now, if I run the server, and I run this thing, it should be a different ID every time. That is a big number. Do we need numbers that big? No. There's never gonna be overlap with a thousand just with local testing, so that'll, that'll be fine. Otherwise, it's too many bloody numbers. Okay, so let's restart the server then. Let's restart this mess. Uh, actually, let's let's start a pimp first, and then we move over to here, and then we start up him. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Um, what if I move him? Does that work? No, that does not work. Okay. Of course that doesn't work. I haven't programmed that to work. But still, this is now we're officially multiplayer. I I get so excited about these things. So excited. So then what the next thing that we want to do is Sorry about all the weird noises today. I'm just having one of those days. Um so what we want is follow path. No, find path. No. Enter game. No. Set path. Set path. That's what we want. Then we want server dot uh, map dot dot move ID 
like this, and then this dot path. Think. And then set path gets called somewhere. So we no longer want to do this because that is going to be done in the map. So go to definition. Generate method stub. There's probably some kind of convenient uh, shortcut, key shortcut, but I don't know it. If you know it, leave a comment in the in the thing. In the thing where you leave the comments. I am just trying to get through this as quickly as I can. So let's just do this. And then remove one of these, and then make this a move message. And then be like client.id and then queue. And that should work. That's just, uh, it's, yeah, this is annoying that I'm having this uh, thing where I can't run two copies of uh, the thing. I am going to fix that between episodes because as annoying as that may be to you viewers it is literally going to annoy the piss out of me and i do mean literally okay so um go in here um do it do a youtube client go put this away and then move oh you my god oh you my good you my good so, like, if I move this guy, he's gonna give an error message. Could not set a path for entity with ID blah 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 because we don't have an entity. So that's interesting. So what we need to do is when an a client is added, we also need to do the reverse. So if C is not me, that rhymes. Then we want to send find dot send. Actually, let's just copy this. So we basically just want to do the reverse. So, that should work. I think. And we don't have to recopy uh, the client, because that should already be working. Okay, so client 1. Let's just move them over there. Client 2. They both see two clients. How many clients do you see? I see two clients. It's two clients. That's a movie reference in case you were wondering why I was suddenly acting strange. So wow, yes, we have multiplier, multiplier walking sim functionality. It's not, not much of a walking sim, but we do have it and it is multiplier. So that's uh, good. I think that's good. Do you think that's good? I think that's I think that's great. I think that's fantastic. Uh, and we could add add a third. No, we can't because of that bug. Unfortunate, but unfortunate, but true. So um, yeah, that is a thing. That is a thing that works. Um, so we basically have this up and running now. Clients don't get removed yet, so if I if I uh, shut down one of these... Yeah, it's gonna be left standing there. Yeah. But now we do have three clients... We, we do have three clients, so you know, you, you win some, you lose some, I suppose. Oh, uh, yeah, we have multiplier. Multiplier. We have multiplier. We have Markiplier. No, we don't have Markiplier. I would like to have Markiplier. That would be uh, probably I'd get a lot of subs. But uh, anyway, we're kind of already over time here. So thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time.